Describe short-term funding alternatives available to banks. The important thing to remember in this section is that banks have a larger financing need than most other kinds of company, simply by the nature of their operation. Here we will look at the various options available to banks, both retail deposits and wholesale funds. But first, why does a bank have these financing needs? The primary need a bank has for funding is to balance their loan book with their deposit book. Banks are required to hold a portion of their deposits in reserve so they can enter the market as both a borrower and a lender when the dollar value of their loans exceeds their loanable capital or when they have loanable capital to spare. Following that, it's important to realise that wholesale funding is often a cheaper alternative to retail deposits when a bank is short on funding. Banks routinely access wholesale funding at wholesale rates to meet their funding needs for loanable capital and this will lead to a lower interest expense than that paid to a retail customer. Finally then we have balance sheet interest rate risk management. Now, this idea is based around the ability of a bank to sell out of a certain kind of interest rate risk and buy into another to shift their risk exposure. Now the most obvious source of financing for a bank is their retail deposit book. The deposit book can be made up of three major types of account. First, we have demand accounts or checking accounts. These offer the lowest level of interest but have the highest level of withdrawal availability. Following that we have money market accounts. These offer some return while still offering withdrawal on a short notice although now there may be some delay compared to the immediate nature of a checking account. Finally then we have savings accounts which offer the highest level of return to the depositor but are much more restricted with regard to withdrawal. Now following on from retail deposits we can dip into the wholesale market. First in this area we might consider interbank funding. This is a market between banks with those holding excess cash lending to those who are short. The term can range from overnight to up to one year and interest is charged at the interbank offered rate. The most commonly known of these is LIBOR, the London interbank offered rate. Next then we can look at negotiable certificates of deposit. CDs are instruments which represent an amount of money held on deposit for a certain length of time at a certain rate of interest. The idea is that a depositor can choose rather than put their money into a retail account to buy a CD. By issuing the CD the bank has received some funding and the depositor is earning a market rate of interest. From there they can choose to either hold the CD to maturity, sell it in the open market or withdraw prior to the maturity date, although that would mean some kind of a penalty. Finally then we would consider central bank funding. This is generally a last resort for banks who cannot obtain short term funding to cover their reserve requirement. Again the term would be from overnight up to one year and the rates charged depend on the bank. In the US the Federal Reserve acts as this lender of last resort and they charge an interest at the Fed rate. Describe repurchase agreements, repos, and their importance to investors who borrow short term. A repurchase agreement, often called a repo, is an arrangement between two parties where one party agrees to sell a security at one price and also to buy it back later on the repurchase date for another price, the repurchase price. A reverse repo is simply the same transaction viewed from the eyes of the lender. It's like entering into a spot and forward contract at the same time. We contract to do one deal today and an opposing deal in the future. It's basically like a sort of collateralized loan. We'll give you money and hold on to the security and when the time comes you pay us a higher amount to get the security back. Now when we talk about repurchase agreements there are two terms you need to be aware of. The rate of interest implied by the sale and purchase prices is called the repo rate. This is the difference between the selling price and the buying price and it's earned by the party who holds the security during the term. It's calculated as the annualized difference between the two prices although you will not be asked to perform that calculation. The repo margin 
or the haircut is the difference between the amount loaned and the market value of the security in the agreement. This protects the lender from a potential drop in the value of the security during the term of the repo. There are several factors which affect a repo rate. First is the risk associated with the collateral. The risk is lower when the value of the collateral is guaranteed, for example, with a US Treasury security. If the lender can bank on being able to liquidate the collateral in the case that the borrower defaults on the repo, they will charge a lower rate. Second, we must consider collateral delivery. If a lender requires that they actually physically hold the security rather than contractually holding it, they will charge a lower rate. This accounts for the fact that the lender has control over the security in the event of a default. Third, we have an account for the supply and demand characteristics of the collateral. A security which is scarce or in high demand will again lead to a lower repo rate. Finally, then we must not forget that the repo rate will also be based on other rates being offered in the market. Describe the use of interbank offered rates as reference rates in floating rate debt. Coupon rates for floating rate securities are often quoted relative to some reference rate. The coupon rate doesn't just float randomly, it moves in tandem with some reference point which moves with the markets. The floating rate of a security is usually set some distance away from the reference rate, which is called a spread. This is the amount we are due to earn or pay more or less than the reference rate. One reference rate which is commonly used for these types of securities is LIBOR, the London Interbank Offered Rate. Now you will not be asked how this is calculated on a day-to-day -day basis, but just know that it is built on the rates that some major banks believe that they would be able to borrow from each other in the short term. Some other reference rates include Euribor and Tybor from Europe and Tokyo respectively.